If you've been following this channel for a bit now, you'll know that I love large ergonomic gaming mice. In fact, my personal top 5 list is 80% ergo and only one ambidextrous. Which is why I was so excited to finally try out the DM6 Holy by Dream Machines. My current number one, the Glorious Model D, is a fantastic mouse, but it still leaves a bit to be desired. Not in terms of sensor or cable, but just in overall shape and shell. I seem to run into this problem quite frequently. The Zowie EC1 always felt a bit large for my hand, and the EC2 felt a touch small. It's a similar story with the Model D and D-. So the question becomes, have I finally found that perfect in-between mouse? Now, I've only had the DM6 for a little over a week now, so I'm hesitant to put it at the number one spot, but I definitely think it's at least going to end up in the top five. The real question I'm betting most of you have is, well, who cares about you? Is it right for me? Hopefully I can answer that in the rest of this video. Now, I have the wired S version here, but there are also non-S and wireless variants. The non-S, as far as I know, is the exact same in every way, except for the sensor. The S comes with the Pixart 3389 and a max DPI of 16,000. The non-S comes with the Pixart 3360 and a max DPI of 12,000. I wouldn't stress over this difference too much, they're both fantastic sensors. The only reason I got the S version was because I know I'd be doing a YouTube video on it, and it was only a few bucks more. As I mentioned before, the DM6 is a large ergo mouse for right-handed users only. It weighed in at a respectable 66 grams on my scale, which is a few grams below its listed spec of 69. This is also a few grams lighter than the Model D. These are the dimensions listed online for it, and for the most part, they're accurate. However, it is worth mentioning that the 66mm dimension is the mouse at its widest point, in this case, the rear. The dimension most are probably more interested in is its grip width, which I measured to be just over 60 millimeters. Here you can see it pictured next to some other mice to see how it compares. The shape is definitely an interesting one. It feels like an elongated Zowie EC2 or G-Wolves G302, definitely in between the EC2 and Model D in terms of overall size, which seems perfect for me. Probably the biggest complaint I have about this mouse is that its honeycomb pattern extends to the sides. This is something that's also found on the G-Wolf Skull and Extrify M4, just to name a few. This results in feeling like you're holding onto a cheese grater. I'm not certain yet that it affects performance, but it just cheapens the overall feel of the mouse. I would happily trade a few extra grams in weight for solid sheets of plastic like you see on all the glorious mice. It's something small, but affects the overall feel in a significant way. Thankfully, overall build quality feels solid. No creaks or cracks on my copy, even when stressed. You can activate the side buttons by pressing firmly just below them, but I wouldn't worry about this as you'll never be applying this much force while actually using the mouse, and it was never an issue for me in-game. Buttons feel really solid, especially the side buttons. This is something not a lot of mice manufacturers nail, but it's great to see that Dream Machines has. Placement, size, and pre- and post-travel all feel spot on. Mouse 1 and 2 use Huano switches, so they'll probably feel a bit stiffer than what most people are used to. Comparing them to the Zowie ZA series, I would say the DM6's Huanos are a touch lighter, probably because Mouse 1 and 2 are separated from the shell on the DM6. The scroll wheel could use more tactility in its steps, and, it over and overall it feels a bit loose, but it's by no means bad. Here's a sound test of the buttons so you can get a feel for them. As you can hear at the end of that clip, there is a very small amount of sensor rattle. It's not nearly as loud or prominent as the rattle found on my ASUS TUF M3, so I'm not going to knock it as harshly, 
but it is another potential place for improvement. After I posted my review of the M3, I did have a few people tell me that there was no sensor rattle on their copy. So this is an issue that seems to vary greatly depending on which batch your mouse is from. Frankly, I think I need to use the DM6 a bit more to see if that minor amount of sensor rattle actually translates into any real world negatives. So far, I haven't really noticed anything. They also don't really tell you what the buttons on the bottom are for. It's not even in the manual, which seems like an oversight. The one next to the scroll wheel changes DPI, which <laughs> I have another issue with. There's no 1600. In this day and age, Dream Machines, what gives? Thankfully, they are supposedly coming out with software for the mouse, which you should be able to set custom DPIs. The preset DPIs along with their respective colors are as follows. 400 is red, 800 is light blue, 1200 is green, 2400 is pink, 4800 is orange, and 16000 is blue. The button underneath to the left of the sensor is to toggle the DPI LED on or off, and I believe the one to the right is to change the liftoff distance. According to their website, you can select an LOD of 1, 2, or 3 millimeters. But testing this, I found the DM6 to have a liftoff distance between 1.1 and 2.2 millimeters, regardless of what it's set to on the mouse. This could just be an issue with my particular copy. Frankly, I don't really care that much either way. The default LOD seems to be in line with other top mice. The mouse feet feel great. They had a smooth, fast glide right out of the box. Just be sure to peel off the plastic covering on all four feet before use. In the future, I would like to see smoothed edges on the mouse feet, as these have noticeable sharp angles. I'm sure this minor issue will correct itself over time, but it would still be a welcome improvement. It also looks like the stock feet can just be replaced with hyperglides, which is always a nice bonus. Just be sure you get model MS3. The cable is yet another strong point of the DM6. It's light, flexible, and seems fairly durable. While gaming, it was unremarkable in the best way possible. Really, I rarely noticed it. Overall, I am really impressed with this mouse. Its shape, buttons, and cable are all top notch. I think its shape in particular is going to end up being a personal favorite of mine, if it's not already. If it wasn't for that small amount of sensor rattle, I would just tell everyone thinking about it to go out and buy it immediately. Hopefully it's just an isolated incident, but if you do have a DM6, do let me know in the comment section if yours has any sensor rattle. Even with its few faults, if you have medium or large sized hands and use claw or palm grip, I think this is definitely a mouse worth checking out especially when you consider the non-S version starts at just $42 shipped in the US. I got mine from Max Gaming, but it looks like it's also available on the Newegg Marketplace direct from Dream Machines. Just be aware, it is shipping from Poland. Unfortunately, I have yet to find a US retailer that carries it. Links will be in the description if you're interested. This is certainly a mouse I'm going to be using a lot more. Uh, I wanna see if it can dethrone the glorious Model D and take that number one spot. Anyway guys, that's gonna do it for this video. As always, I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Jesus. Jesus. The shape is definitely an instrument, or a touch lighter, Probably be... I would say the DM6's Juanos are a touch lighter. Probably be because... Are a touch lighter. Probably be because... Not. Hmm. Let's get him going. Fuck! Oh! Fist up! No!
kills remaining. Four kills remaining. Just... <laughs> 